Uh, well, uh, so what can we expect during my uh, my presentation? I would uh, I would make some short introduction to the site and to the main aim of the project. Uh, then I would like to say a few words about the photogrammetry itself and our uh, how we try to implement this uh, method into our work. Then I would really would like to focus on the impact of implementation of this method for our field work management. And on the summary, I will try to say a few words about how really a photogrammetry change our way of thinking about the field work itself. Um, okay, let's start from the site. We are on Cyprus, uh, on the west uh, southwest bank of the island, and we are focus our uh, our research or the focus on the ancient city of Neapathos. Which is uh, which was um, set <coughs> on the small promontory, probably on the end of the fourth or on the beginning of the third century uh, BC. City, as you can see, were set uh, in in accordance to orthogonal uh, plan, uh, typ very typical for a Hellenistic urbanistic uh, process. Um, one of the most important aim of our project is to recognize the general urban layout of the city and uh, in order to recognize the economical infrastructure uh, of the uh, Neapathos. Um, during our last years, we conduct uh, a wide, uh, wide scale, uh, non-invasive research. Uh, we conduct some geophysics mainly geomagnetic research, um, remote sensing research, and geoarchaeological research as well. And uh, the main uh, results, like um, the main interferences, which could be interpreted as uh, some reminds of the uh, 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 structures, you can see on the, uh, on, the, um, on the slide here. And after it, we will uh, try to um, set uh, some trial trenches to um, uh, to verify our uh, our hypothesis about the uh, about the urban layout, mainly being focused on the possibly uh, remains of the economical infrastructure. Uh, for now, our works are like divided into two parts. Uh, the main efforts are focused on the agora of the city, where we began our uh, our research, and since 2016. Uh, we began um, to um, set some trial trenches, on the, trial trenches on the north part of the city. Uh, in fact, um, our trial trenches are divided into two areas. One uh, right behind the walls of the city, uh, in the area of so-called hypothetical northwest harbor of the Paphos. And the second uh, area is located nearby the, the northern a wall um, in the so-called industrial zone of the city. And as you can see, um, this uh, orthophoto plan of the Agora, uh, for now we set six different trenches. Uh, <clears throat> mainly uh, our work are focused on the uh, eastern portico of the Agora, which is like the most interesting part of the structures for us. Um, but also we did some excavation in the middle of the of the square and nearby the southern entrance and southeastern uh, southeastern corner of the of, of the um, agora. Also, we set two trial trenches trial trenches to verify some geo uh, geophysical uh, prospection. Um, uh, it's really important to know, uh, in, in accordance to our topic, how complicated the site is. Uh, for example, you can see here the um, uh, orthophoto and orthophoto plan and DAM uh, of the part of the portico, and you can really easily notice that uh, we have uh, like set of the really deep uh, deep holes inside uh, part of the rooms where really um, the explorations of these areas is very difficult, and um, also the stratigraphy is like uh, like real madness. You can see the Harris matrix of one of the trenches here. So <clears throat> we really try to uh, find the best methods for the documentation of all these really mixed uh, archaeological strata. Uh, 
The project itself uh, is divided into two parts. Uh, the, first, the first part is to create a GIS dat database of registered monuments of Nera Pathos, uh, and it contains three different steps, desktop studies, field work, and post-processing. And uh, today I will only focus on the uh, field work part and mainly on the photogrammetrical uh, method we use. But uh, um, my lecture is it's not the only one which um, touched this, uh, this topic. I can uh, really invite you for a, another topic on the mobile GIS uh, session after the coffee break, when my friend Veronica will tell some, uh, more, uh, will say some um, words about the GIS database. And tomorrow morning, <coughs> uh, our friend from Hamburg University will introduce some. Uh, um, some uh, uh, results of the uh, non-invasive research. But okay, sorry for, for uh, this advertisement. Um, this is how uh, our database is, um, is designed. In fact, the most important purpose was to find a platform where we can combine data for, from the field work and from the um, work on the movable materials. But I will not go into the details. It will be done by my friend later. Uh, okay, um, so let's go into the uh, like the main topic of the presentation, uh, uh, the photogrammetry. We use which we using um, five different uh, kinds of the photogrammetry data. We use the satellite images, uh, archive aerial photographs. Um, we use data from the UAV prospection in order to create uh, more of a photo plan of the park and a, uh, digital elevation model. We use the photogrammetry for recording some uh, underwater remains of the uh, ancient harbor. And at the end, which is the most important for now, uh, we decided to use uh, close range uh, photogrammetry for every context we uh, explore. Uh, in 2016, uh, on CAA in Oslo, we uh, present our main assumption about the uh, guidelines and workflow <coughs> for using closed-range photogrammetry. And we, then we um, try to highlight the, uh, that the, the biggest problem for our point of view is um, it's a really time, uh, because it's, uh, it's a really the most important factor if you are really trying to ma make good management of the field work. And in fact, the most time-consuming um, element uh, during the preparing uh, 3D models is building the dense cloud. And in fact, you can do it in the low uh, accuracy, medium and high. So we decided to test all, uh, all, uh, all three of them to check which one would be the best, uh, would be maybe not the best, would be, would be good enough. And uh, here you, uh, you can see the results of this, te of this test. Um, here there's uh, some detail, detail uh, of the, um, some remains of the uh, stone structure. And here on the left you can see on the high quality, medium and low. So we decided that the final product of our, uh, of, uh, our documentation system will be the uh, model uh, made with the so-called uh, medium workflow with the orientation high because it's really uh, it's not really time consuming with the medium dense image matching and with the high meshing. But in fact, uh, as you can see, um, um, create such model takes quite a lot of time from the point of view of field work. So we decide to um, use for a, uh, during the day of the excavation using the log workflow just to check if the model is correct. In fact, such a is it's, a, it's a quite fine from our point of view just to, um, just to uh, judge if, uh, if it will be uh, working fine on the next step of the processing data. And you can see it takes only uh, like 15 minutes, so uh, you really have, we really can have the time to take the pictures, go to the um, place where we, do, where we have the computers, check the models, and we decide if we, if we, if we can uh, continue our walks, our excavations. But what really impact uh, is uh, connected with the implementation of the photogrammetry into the field work, which is uh, the most important for me as a field work coordinator. In fact, at the beginning, like so-called this traditional documentation, our workflow was very simple. We have to set the trench, uh, put the control points, uh, set the context, 
excavate that and uh, document, uh, document it, take the images or draw the sketches. So then after we finish the documentation, going back to the second setting, the next trench. After using, uh, after implement uh, photogrammetry, uh, workflow is much more complicated because, of course, we have to set the trench, then put the control points, but it's not only like the, the general uh, control points, but uh, also we have to put the markers and all of them have to be measured. Um, then, of course, we can set the context, excavate that, again, check if, the, if we have to put some more uh, control points, taking them images, and on the site, during the excavations, go and check the, uh, go and check the model. And if the model is correct, it's perfect, we can go back and uh, continue with excavation. But if not, we have to go back and check if maybe there are some new control points needed, or if the images are, um, are taken properly. Uh, it's a quite funny situation because um, uh, my photogrammetrist, photogrammetrist uh, said that theoretically there's no way that uh, after all this process there will be uh, needed to put some additional control points, but in practice such situations happen. So sometimes we have to like recheck all the markers on the site uh, just to check if somebody don't, don't uh, remove the them. Because sometimes students could do some <coughs> stupid stuff and he just uh, feels shame and not uh, say it to us and then we have the problems. Well, um, after, uh, after on-site processing, if everything is fine, uh, uh, our server teams and photogrammetrists checking the projects and then during the night we create the models on the higher address. Uh, so, from my point of view, the process is much more complicated and it's much more time consuming. So, we have to think how to really solve this problem, how to... Uh, we really need much more discipline during the management of the, of the fieldwork. And in fact, uh, when, you, uh, when we um, take a look for a whole crew which is involved into the, um, uh, into the fieldworks, uh, you can see how really complicated the process is. It is to design how to do all the field work during the excavations. We have a whole, uh, let's say, excavations team. When you have a field work coordinator, supervisors, we are in, in, the, in the top <coughs> moment. We, uh, uh, we even uh, excavating in the five, five different places on the one time, and of course, trench crew students. And uh, also, we have a whole uh, field work, uh, let's say, experts team which uh, contain surveyors, GIS specialists, and all, all the rest of the people uh, you can see here. So, uh, finding like a balance to, uh, to, man to manage all these people is really, really hard. Um, and in fact, what's really, uh, what's really impact <laughs> on the, um, the, what's the really impact of the photogrammetry, uh, now the, more, the bigger casualties are inside the supervisors whose work is now much, uh, much more harder. Uh, you can see one of our friends who try uh, to understand how to um, build the proper model, which is um, not easy for a student of the archaeology. And in fact, they are uh, obliged to do much more, uh, to take much more uh, photographs and do it much more properly than, uh, than uh, before. <coughs> Here you can see, sorry it's in Polish, but uh, it's just to see how complicated it is. Uh, there is a gui guideline for every supervisor of 17 points. And this, uh, this is an instruction what they have to do when they finish taking images, go to the computer and they have to do all of this stuff to just to check if the model is alright. And if it is alright, they can go back and, and uh, like say again um, to the students they can start uh, digging. And in fact, it's really important uh, changing in, in designing of the field work because uh, before it was quite easy to dig um, uh, uh, in just in one place, being the focus in the small area because you can document it very fast. Now you need a lot of time. So you have to split the work in the, in the larger area to be in a few places at once, just not to stop the work. <laughs> so um, it, it is a completely different digging than it was, uh, it was really before. Okay, so that's all. Thank you for your attention.